Hey, welcome to Friday night's video and the second video in our master series. Before we really get started on the production in the production series, there's another issue I wanted to deal with then and discuss. The that concept is basically, first of all, understanding your equipment well. Does that make sense? Understanding what it does, how it does what it does. The next thing is understanding its limitations. It's limitations meaning that why does my 200 sound, what is the difference between my $200 microphone and a $50,000 microphone? Why is there a difference? What is the limitations of it? Why is it not as good? Or why is it as expensive? Why do they think it's not as good? And the next thing is to understand your processors well, which is really related to understanding your equipment. But understanding your processors really well. You know, even some of your meat and potato processors, I see people using them, it's like, what? And it'll be like your equalization, your reverberations and your convolution reverbs, your compression, understanding compression, what is the purpose of compression, and things like those are just some of your meat and potato ones. And then you get into some really exotic ones like maximizers. You know, people will see maximizers like this exotic thing that, you know, and it's like it's not. To me, it's become very mainstream in one of my main processors because of what it does. It saves me so much time and does so much for me that saves me so much headache in my compression phase that I love the thing you know preserving my dynamics but getting as much volume out of it as possible understanding and they're getting the algorithms are getting really good understanding your processors really well and the next thing is really understanding audio engineering concepts you know audio engineering you know the acoustics the science of sound and all the interrelated audio engineering concepts related to music production audio engineering you know the how that those two are intermixed and combined to really understand these concepts so that you can really you know apply these concepts to your production and you can apply these concepts when you're using your equipment when you're dealing with your equipment's limitations so that you can deal with you know um, your processors and using your processors really well because you understand all these concepts you know these acoustical concepts and these audio engineering concepts it's the big reason why I put this channel together and a really prime example of a really big combination of those and I just really simple examples I've got this $200 microphone and you know I'm comparing it to understanding exactly what it does how it functions and then understanding its limitations and its differences between a $50,000 microphone Microphone. and starting applying concepts to that the concept is that you know it's got different saturations different you know different um, noise added to it if you watch the, the I think it was the last video before the last video about using noise distortion and saturation as huge tools in studio using those concepts to make to compensate for that to make my $200 microphone sound like a $50,000 microphone and being able to use the processors to help that because not only am I using the processors in my DAW and the other processors like equalizers and things like that to understand my equalizer and how I'm using that equalizer because that microphone also might have a little different low end or mid range or high end and how do I compensate for that to make it sound as close as I can to uh, that other microphone so that basically intercorrelates all those concepts into being able to do that and then even a simple concept like understanding the equal loudness contour and why that you know you want to take that into consideration when you start equalizing before you start sweeping around for problem issues to take that into consideration first because that's the way your ear hears sound and to understand when not to use those concepts I've got that the equal loudness contour concept is a huge concept. I've got a synthesizer patch. Now, if I go by the equal loudness contour, I'm going to start boosting the bass end way up because so that my ear can hear those levels as well as the other levels, you know, going by how the ear hears sounds. But if I do that with that synthesizer patch, it's going to completely change the way that synthesizer patch sounds, which I don't want to do because I've, that's what I'm, I'm screwing with the sound of it. It doesn't sound the same now. Where with a vocal, I might because now I want the vocal to sound as rich and in full with harmonics you know boosted and subtracted in the areas that there should be so that vocal sounds as good as possible does that make sense and that's a huge concept to understand so you can intercorrelate all those things to doing a good production a production you'll see when I get started on this master series in the actual production 
that it's complicated enough. So you really need to understand these concepts so you do all phases as well as possible. You understand the equipment as well as possible. You understand its limitations. You understand how to compensate for it because you understand the difference, what you would need to do to compensate for it. You understand all your processors real well. And you understand these concepts related to audio engineering so that you can use the processors well and the equipment well. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, but it's very true. And it's something you really need to look at. It's one of the reasons why I put this channel together so that you could go research these things. And so that when you actually got into production, that's difficult enough. You know, some of these people get paid a lot of money. So it's not like they all just sit around, you know, flip a, do a knob, you know, and it's all done, bro. You know, it's like it's taking them time and patience and, you know, learning, experimenting and falling down and standing back up again and just rolling until they got it rolling good. And so this channel is put together to try to help you. So really take all that in consideration and really research all that stuff and understand those things. I mean, there's a huge concept like, you know, I've got a pair of headphones from PlaySchool. Well, listen, bro, you're, it's going to be real difficult to make your PlaySchool headphones sound like a million dollar pair of headphones. But you can get, even you can put a very inexpensive studio together and with fairly inexpensive equipment, you can compensate for it and you can do a good job of it. I've got like a $200 microphone sitting here and I can make this microphone sound like a $200 microphone. I mean, it's an expensive microphone, but it's still a pretty good piece of equipment, you know, compared to stuff they did way back when that was just garbage, you know? I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it, you understand that concept. Some people in that might be garbage. It's vintage and they just love it and they'll spend $100,000 on it. I won't because I can make it $200 that microphone sound just like it's from the 1930s if I want. I'm not going to go spend $50,000 on a 1930s microphone. So, you know, or, you know, a big, you know, $500,000 antique desk, you know, to try. So because I like saturation distortion that I know how to compensate for that. So those are huge concepts before we get even into the production that you're going to want to research as much as possible and in your spare time to really spend the time looking at it. Just remember a couple things. Not everybody on the, in, on the internet is an audio engineer. Not every recording, mixing, and mastering it, it, um, engineer is the best out there. And everybody does it different. So that's a huge concept to get through your head. Ask three people, get a lot of opinions, and really research it well. I try to put good information on this channel so it's not questionable too much. Does that make sense? Where it normally works out to an opinion on whether you can use a compressor like that or a reverb like that, but the basic concepts stand. So this, after that, after you really understand that and you really take that to heart and really start considering that before you even get starting it on your productions as something you really need to work on and learn, the next thing is understanding that you are going to do it different. So here's a really huge hurdle that if you're really going to produce music and you're going to be an all-around producer and creating your own music or anything like that, that you might do it different. If I get 10 mixing engineers, here's a real prime example, and they're going to be doing the first phase processing like I talked in the last video, and the mixing, they're going to do it different. Now, this can be a serious problem with a lot of the newer music because I'll give you an example of this that this guy sends me this track, and he's got this first part that the bass and the bass drum are really muddy back there but he's got this vocal sitting on top of it and to me I'm going well it's a muddy mess but he likes it so this concept is more of a point of did he use the processors well understood the equipment and understand the audio engineering concepts so he did it the way he wanted it to it wasn't just you know it just didn't happen that way because he really doesn't understand what he's doing that way because you go ask somebody if that's correct and they're going to give you the answer well you got 10 different people and give you a different answer that well i would have made it brighter i would have cleaned it up more i would have added more reverb i'd have made it more muddy like a wash back there you know it's so you getting the correct the answer whether that's correct or not is probably not going to happen what you're going to get is confused and you are going to eventually come to the understanding as you get better that if you focus on the things that I'm talking about and really focus on using them well and the concepts well and the equipment well, that it'll be more of a question of, did I want the bass to come out like that? 
did I want the bass and the drum? Did I want it to be muddy wash back there, or did I want more clarity? In it? Did I want it more separated? Do I need to pan them off to one side or the other? Did I want it more muddy, less muddy? Did I want one of them a little bit more accent than the other? And how do I use the equipment? How do I how do I use the process and how I use the you know the concepts of audio engineering to make it sound like what I was looking for? Does that make sense? That way you spend a whole lot less time going to ask Bob, Timmy, Ralph, Jimmy, da, 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 if it's done correct because you get 500 different answers. And anybody that doesn't really just not give a crap about you is not going to give you, it's hard to get really good advice unless you give real specific questions which can be very difficult if that's the way you were looking for it. Because Bob, even a simple concept is a little bit of reverb. These, All these engineers might have done it a little bit different. Might add a little bit more, might add it less, might add it a lot less, might add it way more, you know, because of the way they want to hear the production, which they're going to have to get all the whole production themselves anyway to see how the whole mix kind of mixes together to see if they would have done it that way or if they might have done it different which can sound really confusing, which is a huge hurdle that I see people go through, that if you can get over that hurdle and understand that it's your limitations and knowledge and wisdom of understanding what's going on there and how to use the equipment and how to relate the concepts and understand the concepts, then you'll be much better at being able to ask questions because you'll be getting done with this bass track and then you have really finely targeted questions to ask somebody well i did the bass like this but it's not giving me this or is it not loud enough is the bass should be a little bit louder or should it you know i, I wanted it but i was going to add a little bit more reverb but it was getting too muddy and mixing with the bass i'm having this problem of what's going on there how do i solve this problem because i really kind of wanted this to happen but that's not what i'm hearing what am i doing wrong that makes it not not sound like that and that it takes time it takes time of you experimenting it takes time for you working up to understand this knowledge and wisdom and your equipment and your processor as well so that you can ask good questions so that you can get good responses to actually make your production the way you want it because this can be a huge problem especially in like movie scores some modern music and things like that that you know you really have to you know have much finer targeted questions that aren't your opinion because there can be doing it so much different that it, it, it makes it impossible to get straight answers so you can get come up with a track that well, for you're shooting for because you're just you just getting frustrated the other concept that really needs to be addressed is that if you're going mainstream let's say you're doing reggae and you're asking if your reggae is comparable to somebody else answer your question download their mp3 put it in your studio put your processors on your analysis equipment and is your stuff comparable to them is the levels comparable is what you're doing comparable is your bass too quiet is it too loud is your bass drum not is it your bass drum sound flat compared to theirs does your vocal sound not eq good to them and what is you need to download their stuff if you're really trying to get comparable to them with mainstream so that you get heard you know you know as equal you know in their league that what is you're not doing well analyze it and you know way you're going to analyze it well is to understand what's happening well by understanding the equipment you know understanding its limitations understanding how to compensate for it, understanding your processes processors real well and understanding you know the concepts related to audio engineering to make it comparable or when you want to do it different than somebody else, why you're doing that and how you accomplish that. So those are huge concepts to get in your head before you even start your production so that you can do a good production so that, you know, the mastering series that I'm getting ready to put out here for you, that, you know, you, it's actually useful information rather than just, you know, well, I understand all that, but I don't even understand these concepts that I'm talking about right now in this video to do a good job of any of that because I don't know what I'm doing with this stuff or understand it well enough to do, you know, any of the stuff you're talking about well. Does that make sense? And I know that sounds funny, but that's part of the reason why I put this channel together to help you with that. So research my channel and Google me if you want or, you know, message me and I'll try to answer your questions as, as well as possible. But please take all that stuff in consideration as we go through this mastering series to understand where you need to go research and where you need to study and experiment within to really do a good job at the stuff we're getting ready to do. So peace, hope, love. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one when we start our first video on the actual production in this master series.